We're 24 hours down and 24 still to go. The big game has sapped the stamina of some and destroyed the confidence of others. But there are a few who've risen to the challenge and are thriving in the bear pit that is the party poker big game. We have a couple of new faces, and amazingly, Viffer and Neil Channing are both still in it. They're the only two players who've been here since the very first hand was dealt. There are plenty of challenges in the big game. Battling your fellow pros, surviving the evictions, and resisting the lure of that ticking clock. Plenty have come and gone, just two have stood the test of time. Roberto Romanello arrived to take the place of Sam Trickett and threw himself into this game. Andrew Feldman is one of the table's newest recruits and has started to turn a profit. Ellis Rubin took the place of a battered Oscar Pardo and has steadily built up his stack. Dixie Dean has taken the place of James Mitchell and is still trying to find his feet. But there's no doubting the man to watch is Viffer. He's been up, he's been down in several other places, but he's always involved and has yet to face a vote. The most aggressive, always safe from eviction. Tony G took the place of the luckless Simon Muntz and seemed to inherit his misfortune, suffering repeated blows to his stack. Neil Channing joins Viffer as the only other man to have stood the test of time. Phil Locke waited for his chance to join the action, and he's still really waiting for the big break that will take him firmly into the black. We are well and truly in the second half of this 48-hour game. Jennifer Tilly was the star of the opening exchanges and left with a tidy profit. Ruben has done even better and is still at the table building on his impressive form. Channing has turned things around. Sam Trickett has headed for the door with plenty to spare. Please, let's sort it out. Okay. Like, there's no objections. I want to... Well, Tony G wants to be able to buy in bigger. He wants the stakes to go up. He wants more money on the table. 40,000. Because we added the 100. Marty, we make it 40,000. Unless someone objects at the table. I don't know. Unless someone objects. That's fair. Terms and conditions say 20,000, not 40. And let's just play. Come on, let's just play. Let's play. Let's finish. Let's go. I'm much older than you guys. Yeah, we're on it. Yeah, I know. Get a make for better. TV. I'm all for it too. I just, uh, yeah, I, uh, you know, it's one of those things where it's a little bit of dispute, but uh, if they want to do it. Why not? <laughs> Don't stir the pot if you have no intentions of it. You know? Completely so, not true. <laughs> <laughs> And Feldman is starting to be, I mean, from what I can see, he's at that point. He's been playing a lot of hours. That's uh, it. He's ahead a few thousand pounds, but do you think it's starting to get to him? How's he holding up? Come on, man. Well, he's been running into uh, uh, really a cold deck there, and he's shown a lot of patience uh, throughout, which is pretty impressive. You see his mom there. What? You gotta take your hat off to him when you play an elimination you game. You want a good TV game? Safe. No cap. <laughs> it's hard to uh, not get frustrated. Yeah. That's the thing you change it. He has to do what Luke says. What's going on with this? If Luke tells him to change it, he's change it. Change it. Yeah. He's gonna call Luke. Greg, <laughs> check. Luke's Tony in charge of matching the poker. <laughs> Top pair for Let's Channing, go and he's got such a, that defensive game, doesn't he, where he never sticks in the raises on the flop. He's a check caller, and it works for him, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, there's many different styles that work in this game, and, uh, you know, there's no one way to play it. And Channing's got an excellent style, and obviously been a tremendous player for a long time. I'd imagine Tony G and uh, Channing are getting tangled a little here. I know. They're not saying anything. I have to say that's, oh, that's a very good one of card the better cards in the deck. Pretty good bluff card for Tony. I, he might take a stab here. Pull. I have to raise. And it really is a good time to raise, isn't it? Too many draws out there, Neil recognizes that? or? Yeah, you're going to want to play this hand faster on the turn. You don't want to 
You know, there's just a million turn uh, river cards you hate. So, I mean, is Channing gonna face the problem? Now the pot's gotten big. There's so many uh, draws that could complete on the river. If Tony decides to turn his hand into a bluff on the heart, on the diamond, and bet big, you're scared of that, aren't you? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, if, if the turn, if the river breaks, I'd, I'd go ahead and check to him. Uh, that right there, that has to be a great bluffing card. That's a great bluffing card. If I'm, if I'm Channing, though, I'm not. I'm definitely not ever folding. Uh, so I'm going to give him a little bit of room. I'm not going to try and value bet this very often. And I guess it's, oh, it's, is it, has Tony checked? Uh, I think uh, as Tony has checked. Looks like he's giving up, unless he's going to be a sicko here and make a check raise. That's the end. He's not taking on Channing. It would be a nice sick play, wouldn't it, though? That would be. I actually think he could get Channing to lay it down. But. I mean, how often do you have to make this wow. sort of play if you're Tony G? You, you know what I'm saying? You can't just no, be calling no, no, on no, your no, own no, draw. No. You have to think of some bluffing cards right. as well. Is that the plan? Or yeah, I mean, I, th I, th I think he might have just lost a little heart there. Brave bet on him. Neil Channing takes yet more cash from the luckless Tony G in the big game four. Welcome back to the big game, a 48 hour cash game, which at the moment is giving Ellis Rubin plenty of opportunity to generate cash. He leads the way at the moment. Neil Channing, a stalwart at this table, just behind him, while Feldman and Locke, the only other two in profit. Yeah, 200. All the poker players are now using, you know, all the different kinds of tracking stats. Just uh, from from what you've seen of this game, uh, the stats that you really like to, to follow. Which of these guys are leading, and the stats you, you know, you favor most of all? From you know, if you just had to had to eyeball it. Well, Viffer would be lead, leading about everything. He'd be leading in <laughs> in number of pots played, number of pots raised, aggression factor. <laughs> Uh, you know, flop bets, turn bets, river bets, he's got it all covered. <laughs> and that's a good thing? It is generally a good thing, yeah. <laughs> you just have to know, you know, you have to know when to tone it down from time to time, but aggression's a key. And yet Channing probably trailing in every category, and he makes that an effective strategy as well. Yeah, well. There's, there's lots of ways to play this game, and you don't have to be involved in every single pot to uh, show a profit. <coughs> Viffer's got the three fours from the straddle position. Who's going to pop this? And is this a mandatory bet from Feldman? Too many people in the pot just to, just to check it? I think so. I think you try and pick up the pot right here. You also kind of define your situation a little bit more. People aren't going to want to play back at you because uh, without a hand because they know that you can have any kind of junk in a pot like this. And Viffer is kind of anticipating here, right? He's anticipating if he calls, it could go check, check on the turn, right? So that's why he's raised? Yeah, he's putting in the action now. And and also, you know, he's Viffer, so he, they know he can do this with, like, Jack-10 and just kind of make you have a four. And then he'll follow through with the turn and river. So sometimes guys will get... Uh, you know, get feel kind of committed to the pot and just go ahead and look him up, and he ends up winning a huge pot. And also under the heading of balancing your the range you're going to make this check raise on the flop with, right? It's a strong hand or it's air, and he's not going to do it with that medium strength stuff. Yeah, it's exactly right. I mean, it's he's never going to do that with a seven. He's just going to toss in a call. So this is five six or trip fours, and Feldman's going, man, it's Viffer. How often is he going to have trip fours here? What's happening, Mark? What are you doing today? Yeah. Feldman's problem right now, right? If I call, what am I going to do on the turn? What cards am I looking for? It's, it's hard to know. I mean, that, that hand, that 7-8 is so vulnerable, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. I mean, the prudent play is just to go ahead and toss it right here. And, uh, but, you it's know, Viffer. He, he, it's Viffer. And, and, you know, you don't want to get uh, you don't want to get outplayed. So. Oh, he stuck something in there. What is this, a call? We'll be fine there. He has gone for the call. And so 
<laughs> one of the bad, bad cards for Feldman. Well, you know, any card, because he, he's pretty much got Viffer on like a 5-6 a or some kind of like, I don't even know what he has him on, but he's he pretty much knows that he's not going to play really aggressively if he just hit, if he has a hand like Queen Jack, now he'll slow it down. Because, you know, he's, uh, uh, Viffer might be afraid Feldman has a 4. So he knows that uh, he can only be following through with, with uh, three fours. And I'm guessing he's checked that turn because he's thinking he can only get one more street of value. Wow, how about that play? Now he's bet pot. Is he gonna get, is he gonna get paid off? Is this tricky? I, I think he might get paid off here. I think uh, Feldman's thoroughly confused. He knows that even though there's two overcards there, he can only really be going for that type of value. Most likely, anyway, with uh, with three fours. Well, he's managed to lay it down, Feldman. He wriggled out of Viffer's contortions. B six high. <laughs> yes. I almost did it to him. I had a big hit at six high. And now Feldman's saying I had the five six. <laughs> oh, life, by the way. <laughs> Still haven't seen one guy tell the truth yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, lucky for these guys that, according to the Greeks, truth is relative. Straddle is on. That's real chatting, although the straddle is nearly always on now. Dixie's only got a peanut there. He's going to be it for me to say Andrew Feldman's on the tilt. That's fine. Well, he did lose the last pot he played. Actually. This is 500. And the raise here. Actually a re-raise, but really it's a raise. Pass. Kind of makes sense in the context of the game, but it ain't much of a hand as it does to Hey, next. Next. Oh, I don't want to give action. One all finished. Call resistant. Too good at no. it. Case King comes here. It's pretty fun. <laughs> That'll be enough of our randomness for the day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and this nearly is good. Oh, okay. Might see a Tony G and Channing uh, collision here. I, I think one thing I, I've noticed, uh, if there's a trend, is that uh, if, if Feldman's the pre-flop raiser in position, um, he probably checks behind with not, when he misses the flop more often than some of the others. Right, and you have to understand that if you're in the blinds there. Yeah, I mean, it's perfectly, uh, you know, it's one of those situations where it's going to be pretty close. So, uh, between betting and, and checking, I mean, it's not going to work every time when you bet, so. Check behind is no big, no big deal. Chatting the, the quick call, there was probably no escape there. The way it happened. In yeah, fact, the he, way it went down for sure. He just, he called so quick. He's the only thing, geez, why did I bet three when I could have bet five? Why did I bet five when I could have bet six? You get outplayed a lot, but you don't go broke either. I like to say sometimes it's more important to stay in the home you have than to win another one or a bigger one. <laughs> And just especially sort of the, the, the overall game plan or, or what's happening to Dixie right now is he doesn't seem to be getting paid. People aren't giving him action. So he kind of needs to, in position, let them come to him, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, he's played a very straightforward style, which can be effective as well. Uh, you know, but when you don't get cards, it's just not going to work out. So you do become a little more card dependent. But when you do get cards, you tend to get paid well. So it's a bit of a balancing act. Limp from the button, limped around. Hello. Well, there's a hand. There's no way Channing's going to pass here after. It's, it's a biggish race, though. It's a big, big race, kind of. How deep does Feldman's stack need to be to, to set mine here, or is there more to it than that? Well, yeah, I think uh, I think we'll probably see him tossing a call here. 
the stacks, you know, once once you get above 200 big blinds, three, especially three, four, 500 big blinds, it's it's just hard not to see that flop. Definitely need that condition here. Especially sometimes, you know, an ace will come. Might be able to outplay him sometimes. So, right. It's not all. It's not all just for the four. Got that flop. Right? Who's next? Oh boy. Yeah, we'll get one. Oh boy. Wow. How much trouble is Feldman in now? He's the kind of player I think where already he's thinking about not getting stacked to a hand that beats him, or is that? I think so. I think right now he sees that flop. He knows he's never going to get it in with a big edge. And so I see him check calling down until the board gets too ugly. But if the board keeps like pairing or if it goes like queen queen or something, he'll probably pay him off the whole way. Where are you staying, though? So if you're Channing, are you looking for a safe card, you know, ten of spades or something to check raise the, the turn? Oh boy. Wow. Oh my gosh. Better cards and Feldman's arsenal. Yeah, you're mostly just turning your hand into a bluff catcher had that card not come to answer your question. But now that the king has come, we're obviously going to see some fireworks. Feldman can get it in either way here. He can. And, and, and leading is going to look enough like ace king, the Channing. Oh. 17. You, you have ace king? Caught on the flop with ace king. Wow, is, is Channing actually oh, suspicious? Nice. Gonna call. Really? I think so. Really? Ha I Why? Because. Oh. I, I think that body language right there, I don't think he'd be all suspicious and then say, oh, I raise. So I think he's really confused right now. And I think he figures he might take him off, uh, Ace King, if he raises anyway. And and, and, and Channing is, he is gonna, he's gone from looking like he might get stacked here to, does he have a possibility to actually win this pot now? No, no, you're not winning this pot. Feldman he might. Is he he yeah. might. He's got to wonder so why is he betting. Right now. Oh, oh good. good. Incredibly good. Uh -huh. What have you got? That was the worst card in the deck. Oh, okay. And a beautiful six of diamonds comes on the river. Yeah, just oh, everything's going perfectly for me. <laughs> <laughs> I love the poker well, face of Channing. Yeah, good luck. He may fold this. He may fold this. I wouldn't fault him. Incredible, like how everything I touch. It's made, I've never seen a card. Because why wouldn't Channing just take the showdown if he had two pair? Of course, I mean, he's got I've lost. something. Right. Like this is a massively thin value bet by Channing. I'm sure Neil doesn't want me to fold, though. I'm, I'm, you need to do what you want to do. <laughs> 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 How can everything go so bad? <laughs> I think me and this guy would get along. We sound a lot alike. How can I run so bad this, this whole day? <laughs> well, I only said that about 10,000 times. Of course I have three kings. Well, really? what, what else am I? <laughs> I really think Feldman can make a correct <laughs> fold here versus his range. It's six no, of diamonds. Obviously, we know it wouldn't be correct. I've never seen anyone with three teams before. The best hand I've had all day, top set. Oh, no. Oh, no. Channing's going to show him, right? Is Channing going to show him? He'd have to. I wow. That was a good river card for me, then. Yes! <laughs> oh, no! Wow. <laughs> oh, my God. Like Jaw hits floor. Channing collapses. <laughs> Sorry, Feldman collapses. Can you believe this? Wow. Wow. the doctor. I can't believe yeah, yeah. Channing bet that river. Bet. I thought he'd just take the show. I, so, I think he just wow. figured that Feldman hated that river so much, and you I, could kind of tell. Yeah. He just figured, well, I got nothing to lose. That hurts. That hurts. I think he just felt like he was, wasn't behind, and so why not just bet? I've done about five grand in that, in that deuce seven game. Well, anybody who hasn't showed down the deuce seven has probably done quite a bit of money because... Let's see, I guess it's, it's probably been shown down, oh, what, like 10, 12 times? Like, it's been a pretty lucrative proposition. Yeah, at least I can laugh. 
I've got mid tee. That's when the Rubinator got it in bad. He sucked out. Right. One little do seven win. He, like he played the seven deuce like, like it was mortal nuts. Uh, <laughs> and got looked up, but he caught his river. Uh, I mean, I, 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 I've seen Viffer do a lot of money in two very big pots with the seven deuce. Um, <laughs> neither one of them worked. He's probably way down on the proposition. How much are you guys making? Seven fifty. Seven fifty. So the oh. massive uh, action going on. <coughs> so uh, let's just uh, I guess lock open this up and. Yeah, great stuff. Thank you. Romanellos. Six hundred. Oh my god. You know, from early position is just. You just made it huge. So I mean, just just felt like it, and and look how bad this is. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's one where he's just like, man, I might as well let my money on fire. There's five five very playable hands behind him. Uh, I think he's drawn live with a three, four, five. I called her about every six G. hours. G. She's got top pair in the blinds. I'll talk to you when it's over. What do you want to do now, Tony? The breaks are so short. Fifteen. It's it's actually a really small bet. Wouldn't be a bad pop spot to uh, make a raise here with Channing, but. What, what does that bet size mean from Tony? You know. That's what he's trying to figure out. Just in the blind, you kind of think Tony's the guy. When he's got a big hand, he makes a big bet. But it's obviously not that one dimensional. Channing needs the spade. Yeah, pairs will be good as well. Or just some kind of nasty card he can bluff with. That's not the nasty card he was looking for. Longness. Ah, that's bad. Mm. <laughs> well, bad, but Tony G knows he he, he played at the. Well, at least it was a good check. Uh, yeah, that was a good check. Tony G, the man who rode into this that's game one, full of expectation bet, right? and rightly yeah, so. Always, He's one of poker's bad. larger than life characters. I'm a hobby player, like a hobbit for cash games. I just have a bit of fun and just sort of enjoy. And I've been very lucky. So I've had a few wins here and there, but um, I'm a pretty average player. Biggest cash win, like on TV, I've, uh, I've done well. I've beaten Phil Ivey and Patrick Antonio, Gus Hansen, all the big lineup once, where I won a trophy for being the biggest winner instead of a big, biggest loser. And uh, in cash games, I've, you know, I've had days where I've picked up $5 million in, in Russia in a session. I've had days where I've lost you know, close to a million. So. It's up and down, and you know, it's, um, just trying to stay stay ahead. Welcome back to the big game four. Ellis Rubin leading the charge as he closes in on a 35k profit. Channing nearing 20k. Locke and Dean just in profit. The rest in red, including Tony G, who has managed to claw back some of his losses, but it's eviction time. The time has come that the table has been dreading. It's time for them to decide who's gonna be kicked out of this poker game. Now we know that some people are safe. We have Roberto Romanello and Dixie Dean who have been here less than three hours, so obviously they cannot be eliminated. We also have one other player who is going to be exempt. This is the same person who probably has been exempt the entire time, the most aggressive player in the game. No surprise, it's Viffer. It only cost me 200,000 to get this title, boys. It's all down to the players at the table. Aside from those three that I've just mentioned, you can vote for anyone. I'd like you to take the piece of paper, write the name on the piece of paper of the person you would like to have thrown out of the game, and place it face down on the glass in front of you, please. Biffa, don't you think? There would have been I can't believe I'm going to vote for. That's tiny, please. I thought I voted for. I can't vote for Ellis. 
The time has come. Roberto Romanello, of course, in seat one. We know you're safe. You've not been here long enough to be eliminated, so there's nothing to worry about. Andrew Feldman? I'm going home. It might be you. Yeah, it is me. Who wants to wear the kilt for? There's nothing we can do there. I know. Ellis, in C3, you are safe. I've lost enough as it is. That's for sure. Dixie, we know that you're safe, of course. And obviously, Viffer, the most aggressive player at the table, is safe as well. I'd laugh if it is Tony. And out of the remaining three players, it could be Tony G. Oh, are you worried now? Can I change my hand? Hold my hand. I've got a feeling everything's going to be all right. So the choice is between Andrew Feldman and Tony G. One of these players will be leaving the game very soon. With the most votes, I can tell you that it is going home. It is Andrew Feldman. I'm sorry, Andrew, we need you to leave the table, please. Andrew Feldman is out of the game, not happy. Lost 4,400 pounds, and to be honest, he's played quite well. To be, you know, he's played tough. He just doesn't want to quit the game. I felt my seat position was quite was all right, but um, unfortunately, I just never really got any um, good situations to get my money in, and I was very, very car dead all day, and then I had very few hands that even had potential drawing, so it was very, very disappointing. Coming back to the table, it's a man with a score to settle. It's Robert Williamson III. Robert Williamson III back at the table. He's been there and done it all in this big game. Evicted for his efforts, but walking away with a tidy profit. Up or down, he's sure to be busy. Well, second time's a charm. I, I, I can't. I'm shocked. I got voted off. I mean, uh, I watched Survivor before, but I never thought it would be me. I, amazing. But here I am. I'm back for round number two. And you know what? If they vote me off again, I'll stick around for round three if they'll let me. Robert Williamson the third coming back. They said it's on seat two. Now he wasn't the they first player of the I think he was the second or third. You, you did have that dubious distinction. I have that dubious distinction. distinction uh, <laughs> however, yeah, Robert I the game. I should, I should get the button like was, was coming back in with the chips he left. And he had this funny thing going on when he, when he came into the game earlier. He had a really bad seat. And consequently, he only bought in for 5,000 pounds. You know, he was to the, the right of Viffer, would be into the right of Viffer was not a good place to be. Um, but he, he ran, he like, he like nearly quadrupled it. Cool. And uh, I think he'll like this lineup a whole lot more. Cool. Yeah, I definitely don't contribute to some of that. Oh, right. Yeah, you got, he, he, he picked up the big hands in the right spots, didn't he? Cool. And, um, I made a squeeze play and ran into what I later found out to be his kings. Yeah, yeah. Is that okay? Check. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, how, how could Dusty have folded there? He must have had nothing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I got three bet by David Pete, and that means nothing. <laughs> so my nothing beat his nothing. You know, I'll tell you what, in hindsight, in hindsight, had you called him with that ace three and turned it over, you never would have gotten evicted. That's, uh, that's probably right. It's one of those, one of the, could have been one of those weird equity spots that you didn't think about. Yeah. 600. How about you? It's hard yes. to count in for the uh, eviction. Right? Yeah, cool. it's tough counting for eviction equity. Practice that. <laughs> eviction I don't, don't want to have more gambling with this I, man. I guess yeah. we're missing quite a big gambling. pot here. Viffer leading out in two pair. Locke's got top so pair, top that's kicker. That's and uh, Channing's in the middle with the up and down straight draw. So um, this could go a lot of ways here. And what's the, what's the rule of thumb on bottom two pair? Is there one? Well, I think Biffer should just keep pounding him until somebody tells him he's beat. Actually, I came from Elijah and went back to Elijah. I don't think he you came from any position to start fearing no. anything. Huh? Oh, you came to love him. Smart fault by Channing, oh, uh, or is it related to the fact that Locke's behind him? A little tight. He has a draw on him. That's nuts. Right. And no, I played that's a spot now. where you yeah. could even oh, you raise him. Really uh, you played You played tight? Did you say Oh, I would have played the whole time. I've been playing online. I've been up all How greedy. How greedy can you be here? Very safe. 
I was just saving my own skin. Seven. Five. The block's going to lift him up over 5% of the time. Here. It was him on me. He bet over the pot, <laughs> not too far, full size, and... <laughs> yeah, obviously, he'll feel really good there, but you know, there's these new things going on, Dusty. It's like the Isildur and Durr stuff where they would have bet like nine or ten thousand in that spot, like thinking they're getting paid. Yeah, you know what a, I mean? It's a totally underutilized play, betting a pot over pot. Two pot, three pot. Yeah, yeah. two, three pot. He's the biggest winner again this year. He is not happy at all, and I can see this conversation going, well, with the Kings in that spot, um, I, I would have definitely, uh, I would have always called there. No, you can't call. You can't call. It was a six of diamonds. And then he said. <laughs> that was a six, six, six. <laughs> they kicked me out. And it is a, it is sort of a new level of poker. I mean, it's. Um, it's Race worse than getting. It's 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 Five. worse than losing. It's being Five. told you can't even yeah. get even. You, you get know? stuck and then they're like, go home. You're like, I've still got money in my pocket. I'm no. not giving Five. up this seat. You can hop on your bike. I need a, a weird kind of flop. So if we can arrange that. We I can, can organize it for a small uh, free. I, I, I think this, it. this is yeah, the sort of game, and Williamson's got the kind of stack like right now where um, he, he could. Yeah, that's me. He has given a lot of action in previous poker okay. days. So we'll see that's great. Is. That hasn't worked out exactly as I planned. I checked you. Check. Oh, you check now. Okay, that's interesting. Wow. I checked again. Jen. Check. I didn't even, oh my. Just to find out what you have. Well, you're yeah. about to find out. How are you going to find yeah. out? You're not That's now? how you're going to find out. Raise to 4,000. Three more. What have I got then? Cool. It looks what so bluffy there. Out? It looks like, you know, he picked up six, seven or diamonds found, or something uh, like that. So I don't oh, okay. <laughs> even know. I have a good head. Yeah. Right, because he's underrepresented this on the flop, right? Oh, Brandon. Yeah, yeah he looked really uninterested in that card. Not too ugly. I doubt he's just going to take a flush check. draw and randomly decide to raise it on the turn. Wow. Huh? What you have you got? You check? Yeah, yeah. What you have you got? I have three of a coin. It has, has... I was kind of hoping you'd bet on the end. I, I, I think I've played it bad. Well, what, what, was the, what was his river thinking? Obviously, I'm not going to pick on him there too much, but I think I'm going to have to agree with Channing there a little bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think, uh, I didn't think that the only thing bad was just was, was I, I think you should have found you normally river do. there. Well, I mean, it, it came like a spade, a but you can't be scared of shadows, right? And Channing, you know, he bets, he gets raised. He's good enough to make a decision after that, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, he can get away from it if he gets raised on the river. I don't think uh, Ruminator's going to randomly toss him in or raise there. Uh, he's going to put, he pretty clearly has some type of made hand based on the action. Uh, I think that uh, Channing can have a lot of busted draws there. And, uh, you know, be right. firing a river bet there, and you no, know, he's gonna get looked up a lot. Pass. We've got a live 200, which is cool. sort of Pass. coming in. Phil Locke's done this a couple times now. Um, I think he's got some raisin chips. Raise to 16.25. Pass. And see, Pass. this this Pass. three bet from Viffer. Coming from the small blind. Pass. How much? 16.25. Although well, Viffer is a guy that so does this more than often right. than others. Narrow the pot, yeah. narrow the field. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, out of position there, it's you. You don't mind just getting the hand over with, but you know, as we continue to see, guys just don't fold. So he's now he's got to play the hand out of position, but uh, he's going to love that flop. Hey, I need to get some money from he's, there. He's nice also yeah. Can I get some cash? Probably. Can you give some cash? I'm going to cash better, out. but yeah. how good can oh, you, you be about playing a hand out of position, right? Not as good as Phil Ivey's grandmother, but but, um, <laughs> but, but you know what I mean, right? He, he's he's more comfortable with these scenarios because he's in them so often. Well, he is, yeah, and and he's probably one of the better out of position players you'll ever play against in the world. And a lot of it is. Uh, 
not to take any credit away from him whatsoever, but a lot of it is just he gets a lot more practice than most people. <laughs> so, um, yeah. you know, he's uh, – but he does. He plays out of position yeah, really well, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's quite impressive. He did take yeah, kind of a non-standard line here, not betting the flop. Uh, he just checked the flop. Not quite sure what he was uh, – Right. Was, it, was, was he it? looking to check raise? Was he just looking to check call and give the guy a free shot at a couple overs? Or, you know, I'm not quite sure, but – Pot control, maybe he thought Al, right? You just, yeah. Well, he has seen uh, Ellis uh, uh, just call with aces there in the past and get it in with Tony Double G. Double straddle. Uh, so he may have been a little concerned that he'd get outplayed, uh, you know, by betting the flop and getting raised either with a, a bluff or even like pocket nines or tens or something. So he might have just been uh, trying to keep the pot smaller and kind of control the pot. Worked out. I doubt he was going for a check raise. I think right. I'm pretty sure it's for a check call. Be hard to check raise the guy in that spot and expect to get paid with anything you beat. Cool. Pass. Cool. Pass. Dixine. I mean, is there a better billboard for this particular Pass. massage therapist than Tony G right now. No. I'm like, give me her number, <laughs> her work number, her office number, her hours. This Seven. is a massage you must have. Yeah. Holy Toledo. She's, a, she's calmed down. <laughs> Tony G taking him completely out of the game. I mean, if that's not like the greatest endorsement for being a great masseuse, I don't know what is. Do you think perhaps Channing is paying for Tony G's massage? <laughs> He's like smart and sneaky enough. He just might. Know. <laughs> and did, am I? What, what is just? Did I miss this? Did Neil Channing make this twenty-seven hundred and Dixie Dean just? Just call Very it the out shot. Of character. Very out of character. I mean, it, it, is it is it is it Neil who got the last raise in pre-flop, or did Dixie get a, a, a four bet in for twenty-seven hundred? Uh, I believe uh, uh, Dean called. So he's just he's just com he's just completely had a, had a brain freeze like right L rush of blood type of thing. Well, he might have just said, you know, I want to outplay this guy you know, on the camera. Or, I, I mean, I don't know what's going through his head, but obviously he, can, he has no play now. But cold. And why would Channing? I had a feeling. Well, he figures he's committed at this point, right? And he doesn't feel that Dean can really have any room to expect to to bluff. So I think he's just trying to get all the money and, and not let him peel off two cards in case he has ace king. E even Channing would be quite surprised there to see Dixie show up with the six seven offsuit, right? It's just weird. Yeah, that was very out of character. And Dixie had basically gotten even. Now he's he lost like six grand. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure a lot of it might have just been. You know, he knows he's perceived as tight, so he thought he could run him over, but unfortunately he wasn't 25. deep stacked yeah. enough and he ran into a big hand. Just kind of poor timing. Dixie Dean, the man taking the hit and dropping down into the red. Viffer surging ahead, and Robert Williamson the third making himself busy in the big game four. Welcome back to the big game here in the heart of London's West End. 40 hours worth of action sitting beside me in the commentary box, Dusty Schmidt, who's been at this table already but suffered the indignity of being voted off. Call. 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 Call.
Um, you're not going to get back to try to talk me up with this point. Right. Because you just and your piece of straddle spot airline. here. Now, now this actually, even on the 1400, 1900 stack, you, you want to call here with the 810 suited, right? And what? Yeah. Move straight in? Okay. Right? Yeah. Move straight in. Yeah, that's exactly that's this place. So. I mean, it looks. It could be interpreted both ways. It could look like sevens that never wants action, or it could look like what he has. So. Not wild about Viffer's call with two people behind. I think, uh, you know, he's al he's almost never in good shape against Dean, and he risks getting squeezed out. Yeah, probably thrilled to be flipping here, Viffer. 19, 1975. Oh, well, you wouldn't begrudge Dixie. Uh, I think it's an easy call so if, if uh, to, he's the last person to act, but with two people left behind him. Have a four. Gotcha. It's a little on the optimistic side. Oh. Oh. But I think we're starting to see the fatigue kick in a little bit. Yeah. You know? a little cracks in the sidewalk here. Yeah. Wow, Viffer is he's starting to show. Yeah, he's not looking fresh as a daisy anymore. Oh. Six. And, uh, Dixie down to the Turner River. That way everyone will... Oh, not a great card. That's going to take a few of his outs away. Hello. Cheers, gents. And Dixie Dean. Uh, he gave it a run. Uh, uh, you were watching the early part. Just seems like he never really got the hands to work with. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I feel a little bit bad for him because he was doing just fine right until the very end. He tried to play a big pot, and then he, I think he got a little flustered, and next thing you know, it was all gone. He's called for a Yeah, that's what high-stakes poker will be. I just had an absolute bag of rubbish, honestly. I, I had nothing, no cards. Pair of eights, best hand. I would, and they're playing seven deuce, got a part. I can't believe I never had seven deuce. I had every other combination possible, but uh, no seven deuce. But I enjoyed it. It was a nice pub. I had a nice three or four hours fun. Took a shot. Now we'll leave that seat. And who's coming in? That's the question. When do you think Tony will turn on the Jets here and get back in the game? He comes in the afternoon. You know, I was wondering that myself. It's like it looked so much when Tony came in like we were going to see the, you know, the bash and brash Tony. And I don't know. Well, I think Tony kind of does his own thing, and that's part of what makes him a great poker player. You never know if he's just going to take an hour off and get a massage or if he's going to three bet you every single hand. Right. And, and when he decides to get into it, he will. It's not just the play. It's... It's it's the way he controls the minds of the table, you know, the the mouth, the abuse, the. Tony's I mean, Tony is a Zen Buddhist. This this is not a place you want to go here. God, <laughs> he's dreaming up a four deuce two spot. Well, two thousand and twenty-five. Funny call on the turn. Oh, you better bring some more money. Romanello being oh he's in, he's in a small blind this is he's gonna have a lot of trouble playing this hand out of position right yeah I think Tony can take it away right here with the race. <laughs> so I mean I don't know what it's a sort of student of body language psychology are you trying to bluff this guy right now what he doesn't he, he's not a guy who's gonna put a bluff in is he not right now no He's in a different place right now than. And yet, Roberto can't really. Can't, he, it looks like Tony's got a king a lot of times, right? So what? Yeah, he's going to have a king, 10, queen, jack. I don't think he can get rid of his hand at this point. Oh, no, that's a, that's a weak lead. That is a weak lead. Yeah. Race to 6,000. You had a feeling Tony would do that. But the problem for Tony here is he can't represent much. He wouldn't have slow played a hand on the flop. Uh, on a board that draw heavy, I don't think it was a big hand. And this just looks like Queen Jack trying to push him off. I mean, he could be a total sicko and come back over the top. Uh, but then again, I've been in this place a million times, and it, you still want to just throw up. I mean, you're right, still so in a you, sick spot. You're saying you've done this Romanello thing, the weak lead to induce this sort of move. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, I've caught myself in, in this spot, and uh, you know, you you just wonder what the heck the guy could possibly be representing. I mean, unless he called with eight nine for a gut shot, he just can't have the best hand here because I really believe Tony would fast play a hand on the flop, uh, given how draw heavy it is. It's kind of unfortunate so, for Roberto after making that great call on yeah, the turn, huh? That's that's tough. That's tough. I think he can get away from it now. Putting four. Oh my gosh! Wow. Cool. A small flush. Good. And wow. Romanello, well, you know. Baby one. I'll tell nice you what, that takes a lot of guts, luck, that call. Good luck to you all. It was a strange one today. It didn't quite go for me, but um, and there was that one hand when I started. I was like, it's just inches away from calling, and, and um, he was bluffing me, but I, and I lost my just instinct right at the last minute. Um, you know, because it was such a big bet at the river, and I just changed my mind. It's not like me, you know, and um, that was maybe the influence that, that um, didn't go for me, and then that last hand. I worked the hand out, how um, the hand played, and I was convinced he was on a draw, but then just didn't make any sense the way he played the hand, and then I was thinking, Small I just, some, although I had two jacks in my hand, I just thought he's got queen jack. There's that chance, you know, and um, I was wrong. So, you know, you're gonna be wrong sometimes in poker, and uh, I was wrong today. But, um, you know, I'll bounce back, I'll be fine. But it's, uh, I'm gutted in a way. I really wanted to uh, smash the table up, but it didn't go for me, but uh, we'll see. I'll be back. He's gone out like a lion here. Okay, yeah, 20,000 pounds down, but really interesting hand. But Ellis Rubin, the big winner. All of a sudden, Tony G. And uh, that, more than being a winner, it's that 50 grand stack that's going to now come into play. As one man goes, another enters. Roland DeWolf about to change the makeup of this game. In cash games, there's more room for maneuver. It probably helps uh, more of a skillful player. And uh, obviously, with my. Uh, Assessment of my own abilities, I think I'm pretty good at uh, poker, so try and uh, get as much money as I can. Some of the biggest names in poker hitting the table in quick succession as the clock ticks down in the big game four.